Welcome along to part five of our video tutorial series where we are learning how to create an endless runner game using Python code. Now in the previous video tutorials we got as far as this where we created a cool looking backdrop, put a score up the top, we've got our main character here running along the ground which is a little zombie, and we also got a ghost that will fly across the screen any second now that we can jump up and collect to earn ourselves five points, like so. What we're going to be doing in this video now is adding another challenge um, for our player and that is to jump over some obstacles that will be appearing on the screen. We're going to get some spikes that run along the ground here and they'll be moving towards our player pretty quickly and our player has to jump over them to earn themselves one point and to stay alive. If the player hits the spikes then it will be immediately game over as we don't get any lives in this game. Alright, so this is probably the trickiest um, part of the tutorial, so bear with me, my explanations probably won't be great, but as long as you get the same code as me, then we should be all sweet. So over in your Python editor, I want you to look for this top section here where we're bringing all our actors and whatnot into our game. We're going to go down beneath the ghost. I think that was one of the last things we created. I'm going to make a bit of space here and put in a comment that says obstacles. Okay, our obstacles today are just going to be those spikes, we're not going to add in any others, you can add some more if you want later on. Uh, but to get these spikes into our game, we're first of all going to make ourselves an empty list. So I'm going to call this list obstacles equals and then open and close some square brackets, which means we've just made a list. And because there's nothing inside those square brackets, it's an empty list. We're going to be holding um, the spikes inside of that list later on when we do a bit more code, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. I might even put a comment next to that just saying create an empty list that will hold the spike obstacles. Okay, and one other thing we're going to create up here, another variable, it's going to be obstacles underscore timeout. And that's going to be set to zero. And this is going to be used as like a little counter. This number is going to count up as our game progresses. And when it hits a certain number, then we're going to put a spike into our obstacles list, which will eventually mean it, those spikes will appear on our game screen. This counter will reset once a spike comes into the game and then start counting up again until it hits another random number. And when it hits a particular random number, another spike will be added into the game. Okay, and that's basically how we're going to get our spikes randomly appearing in our game. We don't want too many appearing at once, so that's why we're using this counter. Um, so what we're going to do is leave that set to zero for now when we start our game, and I'll show you how we're going to add to that timer um, in just a moment. So I'll put a comment here just saying uh, this, this number is a counter to ensure spikes appear in our game but not all at once. Okay, so they randomly space out um, their intervals, I guess, to, as to when they appear in the game. So that's all we're adding at the top of the page up here. That's above the update function. The rest of the code we're going to be putting in the update function down here. Now, before we get started on the coding part of the spikes, just remember this obstacle's timeout is going to be updated inside of this update function. So that means we need to make it a global variable so we can access it out here and also update it in here. So where we've got the word global, we've already got velocity and score variables being used there. Let's add in the obstacles underscore oops, timeout. And that way we can now update our obstacles timeout variable inside this update function. Um, now we will move down into this update function. We've got the zombie section, the bat section, the ghost section. After the ghost section, we'll put in the spikes section. So add in a big comment that says spikes. There are our obstacles. You can call them obstacles if you want. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add one to our obstacles timeout counter. Remember, this is like a little timer. And each time the frames are refreshed in our game, which happens 60 times every second, so our game's running at 60 frames per second, then we're going to add one to that timer. So I'm going to write in, oops, I put that in the wrong spot. Uh, where are we? Sorry, I'll just undo all that. Okay, back down the bottom, I was clicked in the wrong spot up there. So under this spike section, obstacles timeout equals obstacles timeout plus one. So 
if I want to put um, I'll put a comment above that I'll just say each time the frames are refreshed in our game add one to the counter um, all right so that's looking good now as that time uh, as this counter goes up we want it to hit a random number when it hits this random number we're going to make the spikes appear in the game so we need to use a bit of an if statement here to get this working so i'll write it up and then i'll put in some comments to explain what's happening so if our obstacles timeout counter is greater than and we're going to choose a random number here so they appear at random intervals in our game uh, we might as well go somewhere between 60 and we'll say 7,000. Okay, so remember we've got 60 frames per second. So our spikes could appear as quick as one second into the game or whatever, so however long 7,000 takes. Um, if we count up to 7,000, that'll probably take, oh, who knows, 10 to 20 seconds, I'm guessing. Um, but that's how long it should take for some spikes to appear into our game. Um, so when we do hit this random number, to get the spikes into the game, first of all, we've got to create a variable called spikes, and it's equal to an actor called spikes. All right, and we need to set up the X and Y values for the spikes when they come into our game. So spikes.x equals and spikes.y equals. For the X value, we just want it to start off the right-hand side of the screen somewhere. So I reckon 860 is probably a good number. It's outside the right-hand side of the screen. And for the Y value, we want it running along the ground in our game. So it's near the bottom. I'm going to guess about 500 on the Y axis would be a good number for that. Okay, so when we've hit this um, random number, which means it's time to put a spike into our game, we create a spike, we set up its coordinates, and then we need to add it to this obstacles list. Okay, so to do that, we need to write in the name of the list, obstacles, and we need to write dot append. That means we're going to add something into the list. And then in brackets, tell the computer what we want to add into the list. And we want to add in the spikes um, and then we're going to reset that obstacles timeout timer back to zero so it's got to start counting up again before the next spike comes into the game so let's put obstacles timeout equals zero okay probably time to put a few comments into our game now so uh, when the number or well, when the counter will like it um, gets to a random choice between 60 and 7,000, put a spike into the game. Okay, so that's what this little if statement is doing. When our counter gets to a random choice somewhere between these numbers, then we're going to put a spike into the game. So this creates the spike, sets up its X and Y coordinates, I better put a comment here to explain what the append means. So it puts a copy of some spikes into the obstacles list. And then we're going to reset the counter back to zero. Okay. That is looking pretty good. Um, so next thing we need to do after we've got our spikes in the game we need to make the move across the screen because at the moment when we put the spikes into the game they're just going to be sitting at these coordinates which means because of the 860 on the x-axis we're not actually going to see it it's going to be off the screen okay so let's put in another comment here move the spikes across the screen and it's just going to um, Actually, it's going to be a little bit different to what we've done in the past. What we need to do is we need to look through this obstacles list to see how many spikes are actually in it at the moment because we can have more than one set of spikes on the screen at any one time. Okay, so we're going to make a loop here. We're going to loop through that obstacles list and making sure we um, get each of the spikes in that list moving across the screen. So I'm going to write for 
spikes in obstacles. Put a comment there that just says loop through the obstacles list. And then we're going to just write spikes.x equals spikes.x minus 8. So that moves the spikes across the screen at what I like to call speed 8. So move the spikes across the screen at a speed of 8. If you want them to move faster, you can change that number to like minus 10 or 11, something like that. If you want them to go slower, uh, maybe minus 4 or 5 would be a better number to put in there. But it's up to you what you do there. Um, now I've just realized we could probably write this line of code a bit better. Uh, instead of writing spikes.x twice there, let's get rid of that. And it will be spikes.x minus equals 8. That's, that's just the shorter way of writing it. You might have noticed as well up here, I might as well do it while I'm here. We could have shortened this as well, the obstacles timeout plus 1. So it should be obstacles timeout plus equals 1. That's a better way to write it. Okay, but anyway, back down here. So we're moving our spike across the page. So that'll get it moving across the page, but when it hits the left-hand edge of the page, I want it to remove itself um, from that list. Okay, so it no longer appears in our game. So let's put that in. We're going to make an if statement saying if the spikes.x is less than, say, minus 50. So just off the left-hand edge of the page, what do we want to do? Um, so we want to go into that obstacles list that we created before and remove... And then in brackets, we just write spikes because we want to remove that particular instance of the spikes. Um, also at that point, if our spike does manage to get to minus 50 on the x-axis, so just on the left-hand side of the screen, that means our zombie has jumped over it. Okay, so let's give our zombie a point. So score will equal score plus 1. So it takes our current score and adds 1 to it. A better way to write that would be score plus equals 1. Okay, just quickly to put in some comments there. So if the spikes um, move off the left side of the screen, um, remove them from the obstacles list and get one point. Okay, so remember, by removing those spikes from the obstacles list, it removes those spikes from our game. So we wouldn't be able to see them anymore. They're off our screen anyway, and they are taken out of the game. Okay, so that is looking pretty sweet. Now, we won't actually see these spikes working in our game just yet either, because we haven't drawn them in the game. We need to go down to the draw function at the bottom and put them in. And again, this is going to be slightly different to what we've done in the past, because we have to go through that obstacles list to see how many spikes we need to draw. Okay, so we're looking in this list, and if there's a couple of spikes in there, we're going to draw a couple of spikes. If there's one spike, we'll just draw one spike. So the way we do that is we use a loop. Okay, so I'll put a comment down the bottom here that just says if there are any spikes in the obstacles list, that's right, currently in the obstacles list, um, draw them. Simple as that. Okay, so let's get that loop done up, so it'll be four spikes in obstacles, a colon, and we'll do spikes.draw. That's all it is. Okay, so we're looking in the obstacles list, any spikes in there, and draw them on the page. Okay, that's looking pretty sweet. Um, I bet I've made a typo somewhere, but let's just have a quick look and see if we can get some spikes running across the screen. Okay, that's looking good, and you might have noticed our score going up. So as those spikes come across our screen and hit the left-hand side of the page at that position minus 50, we get one point. Okay, I can jump over them pretty nicely. As you can see, I can get hit by the spikes and nothing happens right now. We're going to code that up in the next video, but that's looking pretty good. We've got our spikes running nicely across the screen. So I reckon we've only got one more video left. All we need to do is just tell the computer what to do when we get hit by the spikes and finish our game. Okay, so that all looks good to me. I will catch you in the final video shortly where we'll finish our game off.